Now, I know Kakuyu is doing pretty good, but I think Tochi Notion has a real chance. All right, folks, buy them while they're hot. I'm talking Kakuyu t-shirts, lunch boxes, aprons, bubble gum. All right, let's slow down there, Flaric. Are you sure it's a good idea to buy all this merchandise? There's like seven days left, and he's still cackling you. Kakaroo bandanas, key fobs, breakfast cereal. This hype train has no brakes. Hashtag chew, chew. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. This is Mac. And uh, you just re-listened to one of GSB's all-time greatest hits, the origin of the <laughs> Kakaryu lunchbox meme, I guess you'd say. Yeah, the fabled <laughs> origin. <laughs> but uh, It's no joke. I'm dead serious. I have all these lunchboxes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Flarek, I, Flarek I, I hope... Flarek had chosen uh, uh, Kakaryu to be his... He picked him to win the U show, and at that point in the Hatsu 2018 Ba show, uh, he really cacked it up, didn't he? Yeah, he was undefeated yeah, he when yeah. we recorded the midway episode. So Flarek was all aboard the hype train, and then I believe Kakaryu started off 11 and four that Ba show, and then lost his final four in route to Tochi No Shin winning that <laughs> U show. Oh, is that the one Hatsu one? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, depreciated the value of those lunch boxes yeah. real quick. I, know, I remember I was feeling pretty hot because you guys were like, oh, yeah, this Yokozuna, are they good at sumo? This Kakryu? He's not that good, right? <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is a Yokozuna. He's going to do just fine. And, like, he started out fine, but then, yeah, I uh, I was financially ruined. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but but I think that's, that's the question will never we're going to be answering. Recover. That's the question we're going to be answering today, isn't it, Jake? Was Kakuryu good <laughs> at the sumo? <laughs> Could he do the sumos? Yeah, but no, if you're joining us, I hope that means you are ready to rock out with your cack out uh, because we are talking <laughs> wow. about the most... There's a reason these cameras Boo. don't go below the neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we are talking about the recently retired 70... Ah, crap. I didn't write the number down. Is he 70 or 71? He was a 71. 71st. 71st. Now that we've all said it aloud, he is the 71st Yokozuna. <laughs> because Kakuyu. Kakuyu was 69. Hey. hey. Nice. Then Haramafuji, then the big cack, the big swinging cack, uh, followed by <laughs> Kisuno Sato, followed by future Yokozuna, Aoyama. Well, Ryan Hart's the one, cack. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we, uh, we will have... Um, we will have a video trivia section at the end of this episode as well. So I made sure that all of these dorks had something to write on to show the camera. I'm also thinking about keeping it for all future podcasts, just so I can let my thoughts know whenever one of you idiots are rambling on about something. Yeah. Ooh, we just idea. won't reference it at all. So nope. like no one just will actually randomly know what appear. <laughs> hey, we got, we, we got this on YouTube now. Some people will know. Yeah. Yeah. There you Some. Go. Well, we're going to start off with a low point, which is me attempting to tell you his real name and where he's from. Uh Oh, um, <laughs> but <laughs> Kakuyu is the, the fourth out of the, uh, currently four Mongolian Yokozuna that could change like literally the next tournament. So I feel like I need to put some disclaimers on there. Um, whole oh, buddy. Uh, but he was born Mongolia, Mongolia, Mongolia. <laughs> this isn't actually like me playing a bit. Yeah. This is like, no, no, no. actually <laughs> unsure. Yeah. There's like, you're, mm. you're right, Jake. This is a pretty low point. He is from <laughs> Mongolia, which yes. is a country in Asia. Yes. Um, he, is, he is from a, a fairly rural province. The, the other uh, Mongolian Yokozuna all come from where, like, almost all the people are in Mongolia, which is the capital Ulaanbaatar. Mm -hmm. uh, but he actually grew up in a uh, rural Sukhbatar province. That one had substantially fewer le letters, so I felt confident giving that one a shot. Uh, Did you actually ever complete Kakadu's? Real name. I was when really you were hoping that we could move on without talking <laughs> about that any further. <laughs> Mongolialavan. Sure. Uh, no. Mongolia. Oh, that's his first name. <laughs> and then his okay. Yeah, that and family name Anand. I'm. I'm. I don't know why I thought I should try that. I am sorry, everyone involved. <laughs> you know, with as many Mongolians as there are in sumo wrestling, we probably should try to figure out at least basic pronunciation principles of the language. What, yeah. What sucks, though, is that, like, 
you get halfway through the word and you're past your comfort zone already, you know, like <laughs> I can say it real slow, but like, there's so many letters that like, I, yeah, I should have practiced that instead of practicing all of my CAC puns. Um, <laughs> by the way, if, if you're not into the CAC puns, buddy, you are in for a long night. <laughs> Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, Kakuyu, who's, we will be referring to by his Shikona for the rest of this episode, for God's sakes. Uh, he was not from a wrestling family, the way, uh, most of the high profile Mongolians, uh, that come over to Sumo come from, uh, his father was actually a university professor and Kakuyu didn't even really start out wanting to do Sumo. He's a big kid, wanted to do sports, uh, but he wanted to do basketball. Um, hmm. he, no, no particularly family or personal wrestling experience until, uh, in his early teens, he did decide he wanted to pursue sumo wrestling after watching sumo on TV. Um, fun and, fact, many people don't know his father was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So it did run in the blood. The basketball did not the wrestling. <laughs> yes. Yes. The basketball but, ran in the blood. That's why he wanted to pursue that. Important to note. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. I think um, that's a lie. <laughs> but you don't know for sure i don't I, know for sure that sounds like mongolian, mongolian, name mongolian to me. <laughs> just yeah. to refute it <laughs> um so but yeah in his early teens he saw sumo on tv he uh in, in particular he saw kyoku tenho and kyoku shuzan other mongolians that had been recruited in the first wave um go listen back to our mongolian episode um we we covered like the the first wave there the the mongolian recruitment came in like several waves uh, and those guys were some of the first the first wave that started in the early 90s. Um, kind of funny here, Kyoku Tenho, Kakuyu eventually went 15 and three against him in their careers. So kind of cool that the guy, oh, wow. who, <laughs> one of the guys that inspired him to join Sumo, he also kicked his ass a lot of times. <laughs> um, so once he had decided on Sumo, he wrote a letter uh, he, he, and he sent it out to multiple Sumo stables. He had a friend translate it for him. Um, and eventually he was, he got a call back from uh, Izutsu Oyakata, uh, who invited him to, who bleh, invited him to Japan, uh, eventually took him into the stable. Um, and at one point joked that he'd be better suited to be their hairdresser than a wrestler uh, because he was a buck 40 soaking wet when he started out. He was very, very skinny. Yes, ma'am. Did he maintain his love of basketball? Did they put a hoop in the hair? These are the questions I need answered. Yeah, they actually had a, a, a hoop up on the wall. Uh, yes. Yeah, basketball, not as big a deal in, in mm -hmm. the sumo wrestling circle. So what they called it was the cack ring. Mm. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah. Bravo. All right. Bravo. Yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> the oh, we... of where they actually have Enho just curl up into her ball and they just, Haku just dunks them. Into the cock ring. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's let's move on with this. Oh, oh, Mark, you got you got Robotty for a second, but we got the punchline, and honestly, yes. I think that's what we really needed there. Okay. Yeah. As long as we have the image of just dunking and hill into yes. basketball, <laughs> get that into your minds. <laughs> oh man. Um. So let's talk about Izutsu Oyakata real quick, just so you got some background here. Uh, former wrestler uh, Sekiwake Sakahoko, uh, who wrestled from 1978 to 1992. Uh, he got nine special prizes and seven Kinboshi in his career. Uh, four of those prizes being technique prizes, which is going to be a theme of this episode. Um, and uh, Sakahoko uh, inherited the stable from his father, the former Tsuru Gamine, who started the stable from scratch in 1977. Uh, Tsuru Gamine has the still standing record of 10 technique prizes in his career. Hello, Teddy. That is a cute cat you've got there. Ryan. Indeed. Um, and uh, the naming convention for this stable uh, is the, the first kanji, uh, which Kakuyu uses as well. It's either Kaku or Tsuru, uh, and it stands for crane. So Kakuyu's Shikona means crane dragon. Pretty badass. Anything with dragon. Is just about good. Honestly, with so dragon. that's fair. Awesome. It's fair, but yes. Like mountain dragon, river dragon, greed dragon. Yamaryu. Mountain dragon. I like Mountain it. dragon. There you <laughs> Bicycle go. Bicycle dragon. <laughs> Kuma no Ryu. Dragon of bears. Yeah, dragon of bears. That. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, so, anyways, uh, uh, so so yes, this this stable that he comes from, uh, or stable that he joined, has a very very strong history of technique prizes, which uh, Kakuryu will accumulate a decent number of for himself. Um, but he joined Maizumo, the like amateur like 
you know, fight your way into pro sumo. He did this at the end of 2001, um, or excuse me, at the beginning of 2001. Uh, and he made a five and two debut. Uh, and within a year, he was all the way up in Sandan, made two divisions up, uh, which I mean, for, I, I guess I shouldn't say, I, I shouldn't imply that that's super quick because compared <laughs> to some other, well, I mean, it's, it's solid. It's perfectly, it's perfectly yeah. fine. But, um, when you, when all the history episodes that we do are mainly on Yokozuna that, you know, are extremely successful, like Ake Bono, I think he was like in Makuuchi within like five minutes or something. Um, so like <laughs> Kakuyu is kind of a, kind of an exception here because it took him five years to get to the top division. How old was he when he entered again? Uh, let's see. He was born in 85 to 2016, uh, roughly. 16. Okay. So, that's about so right. Pretty, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty much on the young side. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that we've kid. ever seen any of the like guys that have rocketed to the top start when they're 15. Right. Like, I think I think yeah. the closest we've seen is like Hoku Seho when he was like 18 and then 19 now and his quick rise to the top of Makushta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a lot of it also has to do with like, yeah, exactly. So like how much growing do you still have to do? And if yeah, you're like you 16, said, he was a buck 40. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, obviously he put on weight. Uh, let's see, by the time that he got to the top division, or actually by by the time that he was like even starting the actual wrestling thing, he had put on like forty pounds. <laughs> All um, right. <laughs> so he, he's he was really getting up there, and yeah, let's see his his actual like regular build weight once he got like once he stabilized was like around one hundred and fifty kilograms. Uh, so like in the low to mid three hundred pounds. Um, that's perfectly perfectly solid but he definitely started out a bit on the uh a bit on the lanky side um but yeah so he he kind of plateaued actually within uh sandanme um he was kind of let's see he he shuffled around sandanme for like almost two whole years then he kind of like turned a corner he slowly worked his way through makushta in about a year through jurio in about a year and now we're here at the end of 2006 and he's making his debut in makuuchi Nothing, uh, nothing particularly eventful, other than just like the pace that he that he made. It, it was all kind of just like slow, methodical. Four and threes, five and twos. Uh, he actually only had one tournament, uh, one tournament win in the low divisions. Yeah, something that I'm gonna point out about his transition from Jurio to Makauchi, just because I do pay attention to the box. I have this written down, and I was gonna ask you about it. Yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> how absolutely insane his promotion, his initial promotion into Makauchi was. He was Jurio one, I believe. He had a nine yep. and six record, and I think he made it up to Jake's. Jake's gonna be really impressed if I nail this. I'm gonna say Mikeshira nine, eight. Damn it! I wanted to say eight. <laughs> you <laughs> fail. Uh, but yeah, a nine and six record from. Jurio up to Mike Ashira eight is just ridiculous. Where I was talking about like Ura had a twelve and three record at Jurio two, and I think he's going to end up at Jurio thirteen. So that's just how yeah. different. Or M- Makuuchi Magashira thirteen. Yeah. Magashira so thirteen. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah how, exactly. how things change over the past like fifteen years, and who's putting together Bond's case and what they've. Uh... It, it wasn't just that though. Uh, it was very screwy. They had seven people going from Jurio to Makuuchi. <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah. So Jeez. it was it was definitely a screwy Bonzake, regardless of era. Um, but yeah, he let's see. So from nine with a nine and six, you'd expect him maybe like Maigashira, like 14 to 16, something like that. You that know, like would be the, reasonable. Right. Well, it depends on what the size of the Sanyaku ranks was, how many people were in there at yeah, the yeah, time. But for that, sure. that's getting too too far into the weeds and something that doesn't matter. Let's talk more cock. <laughs> regardless, <laughs> re- regardless, it is way higher than it should have been just because of the circumstances of the bonds. K. It was, it was a very weird one. Um, so he was the eighth Mongolian to make it into the top division. And weirdly enough, uh, Izutsu Oyakata's only ever, uh, uh, wrestler that he raised to the Makuchi division. Oh yeah. It's kind of weird. Um, hmm. we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about him later. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I didn't really believe That's that weird. when I read it on, on Wikipedia at first. So I had to figure, I, I had to do a little bit of research to like wrap my head around it. Uh, what's up, Ryan? Well, I know when that stable had to shut down because of Izutsu Oyakata's passing, there were only mm-hmm. three Rikshi there, I believe. So I wonder if it's always just been a smaller stable and with the that could be out of guys, there's not as many chances to get people up to the Maigashira ranks, but I don't yep. know if that's how it's always been. It not not it wasn't always like that small, but yeah, it was never a huge one. Um, and uh, yeah, I, 
like I said, I, I got some more on that when we get there in the timeline, but um, for now, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the early Makuchi career for Kakuryu, um, because this was also fairly slow, uh, kind of like his rise to the division. Uh, he, he didn't really become a Joy Sanyaku mainstay very quickly. It took him like two and a half years or so uh, of just kind of puttering around in the top half of the Magashira. Uh, like like single digits or so, like yeah, you know, like the last year or few of like you know a Takara Fuji or not even a Hokuto Fuji because Hokuto Fuji's been in and out of Sanyaku a few times. Basically, we we get all the way from 2006 to like 2009 uh, before he actually makes his Komasubi debut. Uh, he makes his Sekiwake debut in the very next tournament because he did well, um, but then he floundered around in the Upper Magashira for another couple of years. It, it's it's remarkable to me how we're now like seven years into his career he's in like his early mid-20s and he's still like just okay that guy's pretty good you know he's been Sekiwake once um and, but it's it's really not until like 2011 or so that we finally see him turn like an, another corner um in this time he did pick up a handful of prizes um he he got let's see seven technique prizes in his career. So I think that's a very high ringing endorsement of that stables, uh, that stables pedigree, that stables mm -hmm. ability to train wrestlers, regardless of how many wrestlers they put in Makuchi. That's a buttload of technique prizes, technique prizes being like, you know, obviously the, the, the most prestigious one, uh, I shouldn't yeah, say highly obviously, coveted. but yeah, yeah. It's like, that's, that's the, the, the coolest one. If you could pick a, a special prize to get, uh, technique is is definitely got the prestige to it um but uh regardless this is uh we're like i said we're talking around 2011 um every time we have a wrestler that was active in 2011 we bring up the uh match fixing scandal as far as we know kakuryu has had no involvement there there's no reason to think that he had any uh anything untoward uh under his mawashi I'm sorry um, to laugh. All I could think of is so Kokurai with that one. That's all I can. And then I think story? the chicken yeah. farmer. I'm like, I can't not think of match fixing and not picture so Kokurai. Yep. No, Kakuyu didn't I, get kicked out or anything like that. Kakuyu would be like the last guy I would think of to accuse of anything <laughs> bad or reprehensible <laughs> or anything other than dignified. Just. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll talk about it more, but yeah, Kakadu is just like the epitome of what you would want a sumo wrestler to be. Unfortunately, he wasn't Japanese for uh, the people in charge over there, so probably never embraced him like he probably deserved. But yeah, he he, he definitely was like about as stereotypical yeah. of a of like demeanor wise. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever see, I honestly I think I wrote down more than one, but like I instantly forgot all of the quotes that I had from him. <laughs> they're all just like so bland <laughs> um <laughs> but that's that that i always look as at, look at that as like one of the ways to judge like how how much of a of a sumo wrestler was he like demeanor wise <laughs> hmm, i can't remember anything from the quote i literally just read he must be onto something here yes <laughs> yeah he's definitely tamer when you compare him to uh his contemporaries of haku hill and uh i'll assure you i'll yeah, you as well I'll uh, you especially i'll assure you yeah uh, yeah, Asashoryu was kind of like the the generation before him. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Kakuryu is really only getting into the Sanyaku and making his Ozeki run while Asashoryu is on his way out for being kind of a dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, anyways, that that um, that 2011, um, like the the technical examination, Basho, I think is the phrasing they use. Like the the next one after the uh, the the canceled one, they there was just extra scrutiny and stuff. Um, and with all of those dastardly cheaters being uh, on the lookout, uh, an honest, dignified man like Kakuyu had a chance to rise up and get a Jun Yu show and his sixth technique prize. Um, <laughs> this was his second Jun Yu show. He had one like less remarkable one at 11 and four the prior year, but I kind of skipped over that because there are so, there's a number of years with so little actually going on. Which again just speaks to how dignified of a of a wrestler Kakuyu is. <laughs> um, anyways, let's talk about his Ozeki run. That's another thing that we always want to touch on when we talk about guys that have gotten this high. Uh, so we're talking uh, the end of 2011 uh, into the beginning of 2012. 
Uh, Kaku has been a Sekiwake or Komosubi for about a year, uh, you know, kind of wobbling back and forth. Uh, he got that, uh, that June Yu show in the 2011 technical examination thing. A couple more tournaments of like decent performance. Uh, and then in, let's see, here we go. Uh, in November of 2011, he goes 10 and 5. In January, he goes 10 and 5 and also gets a uh, outstanding performance prize. And then in 2012, uh, he gets a Jun Yu show, Gino show, and Shukin show. So that's a technique and a fighting spirit prize, as well Dang. as the second place. Um, and he lost the tournament in a playoff to Hakuho. Mm. Ah. <laughs> what was his record? Like 13 2, 14 1? Uh, 13 and 2. All okay. Right. Decent. Um, I'll do it. 33 over 3. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. 10, 10, 13, especially that 13 being peaking the last the one end. peaking at the end. And also the, yeah. So the, the junior tiebreaker show match against wins. Takuho. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you would have got, I mean, I think win or loss that, uh, you know, for sure that was, they were, they were going into day 15, like, yep, he's, he's going to get Ozeki. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it would have been, it would have been pretty cool if he had gotten the, gotten the prize there. And true to form, uh, he had a quote here where he said, I, I was not ready for a tournament win yet. You know, he's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't have the, uh, the experience, the dignity to, to do that just yet. How modest, how humble. Yeah. Like almost annoyingly. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, so, uh, regardless though, this puts him at Ozeki, uh, pretty, pretty easy decision to, uh, to promote him there. And he is Ozeki from, uh, here we go, May of 2012. Uh, uh, actually, exactly two years. Hmm. So for exactly two years, he's an Ozeki. Um, not even one Makekoshi. He gets wow, a winning for record him. in every tournament. None of them really all that spectacular. Um, they're all eights and nines. There's two tens sprinkled in there, one eleven. And then something happened in 2014. I'm not sure what. Um but he all out of nowhere just goes 14 and one and again uh, loses to Hakuho in a playoff. Um, he actually beat him in regulation, but he lost to him in the playoff. Oh, okay. wow. Cool. Yeah. Let me uh, bring up some more on that tournament. Uh, yeah. And that was on day 15. Uh, it must, it, cause uh, at that point, Hakuho was the only Yokozuna. So he would have needed to beat Hakuho two straight in one day to take the U show. Exactly. Right. Very yeah, difficult task. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that win over Hakuho in regulation was his third win in 33 tries against Jeez. Hakuho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he beat Hakuho the first time, he was 0 and 26 against uh against all Yokozuna that he had faced. Oh, okay. holy all Yokozuna, I'm like that. That's Tochi Noshin records right. against <laughs> Takuho right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. How many wins was it before he actually got his? Oh my God! Yeah, he he lost his. He yeah, I think he lost about as many as Tochi Noshin did to Hakuo before he beat him. <laughs> yep. But to be fair, everyone was losing against Hakuo. That's yeah. a very a very high bar to to yeah. clear for sure. Mm -hmm. But regardless, um, losing to Hakuo in a playoff, getting a his fourth June U show, and then following that up with another fourteen and one, but this time winning the U show. Uh, including a win over Hakuho in regulation, uh, made it a pretty easy idea, or a pretty pretty easy decision to promote him to Yokozuna, just like his Ozeki promotion. Uh, uh, just just for quick clarification, he did start 0 and 20 against Hakuho. 20. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So this is something that gets brought up a lot, especially because the last two Yokozuna have been promoted this way, Kisuno Sato included. Um, it used to be the idea, well, maybe not used to be, but like the, the general idea is win two tournaments in a row and you get as an Ozeki and you get promoted to Yokozuna. Uh, but there's also this clause that, or the equivalent is good enough. So in this case, a 14 and one with a playoff loss was deemed equivalent. Okay. You kind of have to bend the rules in the Hakuo era a little bit. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> Otherwise you don't get anything. <laughs> Yeah. And the fact that he had a win over Hakuho in regulation, I think, also definitely helped in both of really those 14 and ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, Hakuho just had uh, a couple more losses. I think he ended up 12 and three in that second one. So there, there wasn't a playoff in that second one. He just won it outright. That's the way to do it. 
And uh, so in May of 2014, he makes his debut as Yokozuna 2 East, because at this point, um, Haramufuji Harama mm-hmm. was involved, but why was he? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, e- duh, 2 yeah, East. East. So yeah, he'd be two the, East. the third out of three. Yes. Uh, I For some reason, I was like, who's the fourth? Oh, God, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the fourth Somebody... doesn't come until much later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody needs to learn how to Bonske, Jake. <laughs> somebody does, and, and uh, somebody already did, so now I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, so, Kaku, you picked the Unryu style uh, doyo iri, so of the. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, as opposed that's to the, the two loops, Shiranui. Right? Um, I believe that's the one loop. You go God, on. Jake, you had to say I, it's the same I as no Sato. I knew it in my head until you started asking me out loud, yeah. Mac. Damn it. I, Sorry. I, so yeah. This is your the, fault somehow. The now. big thing is it's like the one hand out, and one of them's just kind of caressing their... Right. Like, one's more aggressive, breast. and the other one's more defensive, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. It looks like Unryu is the single... The single uh, loop. Okay. Loop in there the back. Uh, it is also much, much more common. Uh, it, there's 41 of that style, and there's 13 of the other style. Mm. Yeah. Um, for, for the longest of time, like uh, the... What's not Umryu, but what's the other style called? Shira Shira Nui. Nui. Shira Yui. Shira Nui. Yeah, that was uh, kind of considered bad luck for the longest of time. Like, there's a lot of hot, uh, Yokosun who picked that and, like, they got injured or something kind of bad happened. And so it was actually, the, a lot of people ended up not using, like you say, it was very unpopular uh, until Hakuho came around and made it really, <laughs> brought a lot of good luck to the name. Oh, Hakuho. <laughs> Yeah, I think if somebody said, hey, don't do this because it's cursed, Hakuho probably said, I'm now doing it. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's Hakuho. <laughs> it um, also looks this is so mine. much cooler, personally. Nah. Like both arms <laughs> out. Yeah, that's that's a good look. Yeah, the double loop is definitely cooler. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so Hakuho and Harumafuji uh, used Shiranui. Uh, let's see, going back also, Wakanohana, Asahi Fuji. Oh, and then Futahagro. Yeah, so, okay, ah. I can understand why that's looked at as bad luck compared to the other <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, for the record, Kisuno Sato also did Unryu, just like Kakuryu and the majority of everybody. Yeah. Um, anyways, though, so he picked that style. Uh, also around this time, he announced his engagement. Uh, he uh, uh, got engaged to a Mongolian woman whose name is even harder, it looks like, so I'm not going to That's a weird name. One. It is a weird name. <laughs> Even harder, indeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it was a big deal for uh, um, for anybody to get uh, to get you shows in this in this Hakuho era, of course. Uh, some of the only other guys, like it, it was basically Hakuho and Haramufuji soaking up the winds at this point. Kisuno Sato, uh, not Kisuno Sato, um, uh, oh. Shogiku. But over the next, yeah, yeah Giku. Over the next couple of years here, there was Kota Shogiku and Kisuno Sato and Kakuryu. Or as I like to f- refer to them, since those other two guys are super rotund, the cack and balls. Um, but, uh, oh, that was that was a clumsy one, but we got there. Uh, it's it, it it hit it hit. So in 2015, though, the next major narrative of Kaku's career begins, and that is injuries. So the first matches that he ever missed uh, were were in this period, or excuse me, uh, first that he had ever missed as a Yokozuna came at 20. Um, yeah, as a Maigashira, he missed like three matches. Okay, that's fine. Um, but it wasn't until 2015 as a Yokozuna that he missed significant time. Um, and he was the first Yokozuna in 12 years to sit out consecutive tournaments in 2015 when he had multiple injuries going on. His very first one, uh, his first major one was a shoulder injury, actually. Um, but anyways, he comes back from Tubasho off and then kind of kicks ass. So he gets a uh, June Yu show immediately and his second career Yu show in uh, September of 2015. Funnily enough, these were both at 12 and 3. Just sometimes that's good enough, sometimes it's not. Good enough for Terra Fuji past couple of Basho. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. The, the one I wanted to bring up, though, was uh, in September, the one that he did win. He lost to Terra Fuji in regulation, but then he beat him in the playoff. Mm. Um, so he, he has become the hack. He was formerly the cack and now he is, he, he takes the, the, that, that wasn't even a pun. That was just, like, I was about it, to say, I, just, I don't know about that. No, one, it, it was no, that wasn't even a pun. It was just the same, the exact same position that he had been on the other side of just like a couple years earlier. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, oh, here's the, the quote that I wrote down that you're going to forget the second I stop talking. He says, it was tough. I thought I might lose a title once again, but then I came to think that all I needed to do was to execute my style of sumo. <laughs> I feel rewarded for continuing to work hard without getting down on myself. Mm, wow. He, I almost fell I asleep like reading guy. that. Let's go. He, he, he <laughs> could have saved himself a lot of trouble. It's like, I thought I might have lost, and I didn't. But I did. Question. <laughs> my brand of sumo, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, then we are – now we're into 2016. We are, we're, oh, so close to the GSB era here. Uh, I can I can feel it coming as as it is popularly known from I believe probably September of September of 16 is when we started forward is is the official GSB era of sumo and kind of when it went down the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it certainly did for the CAC. Um, it, it, yeah, from this point, from the GSB era on, he was he was a rather limp, uh, a rather limp CAC. He, he did win more U shows in the GSB era than any other era, though. Also and true. those are the only tournaments he finished for the most part. Oh, no. <laughs> Not literally, but really close. So 2016 starts off 10 wins, 10 wins, 11 wins. Sounds good so far. Uh, then the back and the ankle start acting up again. Uh, sits out another tournament. But then he comes back uh, just like the year before. I'm pretty sure this is where he was like doing... Um, 2015 and 16, I think he was doing seasons of an anime, or at least going for that storyline. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> he starts out with injuries and tribulations and then wins the U-Show at the end of the year. <laughs> Fits. 2017 blows that out of the water, though, uh, because in 2017, he got 18 wins <laughs> in the year. Yeah. Uh, he That's finished... when he was like, uh, ah. injured a lot, right? Yep. Uh, so the list for this year going to need to be more specific, Flarek. Yep. The list for <laughs> yeah. this year is the right leg, the left ankle, the right foot, and then the back again. Um, back is back. He got a ten and five in March, and that is the only tournament that he that he actually finished. He uh, he got most of the way through January, and then the final four tournaments of the year just crap. Uh, he got he went one and three, and then pulled out, and then he went Ouch. two and one, and then pulled out. Then he sat all the way out in September and November. Yeah. yeah. And this is the, when, when we were first starting our podcast at the end of 2017, this is the first time that the get healthier or, or get out uh, narrative started. It was literally around from the very beginning of our podcast. It sure was. <laughs> uh, so Izutsu continuing his trend of kind of being really hard on Kakuryu and said, if he can't win next time he steps on the dohyo, there will be no option to pull out midway. He would have to take the decision to retire as a man. Oh, man. All right. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, and then something that uh, I'm going to pretend is causation and not correlation is at the end of 2017, we got the Haramugazi incident. Ah. Uh. Uh, Kakuyu got docked his pay for a tournament uh, because he was in the room and supposedly an adult and didn't stop the shit from going down. <laughs> supposedly? Yeah. An adult. Him and Hakuho, a bunch of other people, yeah. yeah. I can yeah. only imagine that Kakuyu was the designated driver. <laughs> Honestly, probably. And he was yeah. probably right there in the middle when Haramufuji cold-cacked ter- uh, Takanoiwa right in the head. <laughs> yeah, I had that one written cold down. Cold-cack? I, was, I wasn't sure I was going to work that one in. <laughs> Yeah, well, you did it. Well done. But I did it. Uh, Keep 2018. Coming. Keep him coming. Don't encourage it. <laughs> no, I will. 2018 was simultaneously the most successful year of Kakuyu's career and also continuing his downfall. It's a very Ugh. weird year. So he starts yeah, he off. Like... Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. He, he starts off working for free and gets 11 and 4 in January. And then for the first time in his career, actually gets to you show in a row uh, in, uh, in March and in May. And this is also right around the same time as Tochi Notion's real, uh, real big run to get Ozeki. Uh, so I, I loved 2018 because there was, a, there was a year where we had like Kakuryu versus Tochi Notion as like the main rivalry somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Uh, and then we went back to Hakuo wins, LOL, of course. But like, you know, we had a, we had a quick break with like, it was a spinoff season of the anime for one year. The OVA. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was an OVA. That's what it was. It there was not go. canon. 
It was absolutely it was the not OVA. <laughs> be be remiss to not point out that the the highlight of the Tochi no Sheen versus Cock to You rivalry was the infamous Tochi no Sheen Henka of Cock to You. Oh yeah. I believe that was to maintain his Ozeki rank. <laughs> yes, that was later. That was not during this. That was actually in 2019. It was oh, the was that really? Okay. It was the last time they ever fought. <laughs> and I am still correct that it is the 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 end of their rivalry. Yep. So Tochi Notion was like, son of a bitch, I'm going to end my career 24 and th- or three and 24 against this guy. And he's like, no, <laughs> not today. So help me. I will end it four and 23 against this guy. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to keep my massive amounts of money, please. Yes, please. Yes. I would prefer the money. <laughs> <laughs> and parking spot. And my yes, parking I want my parking space. <laughs> um, so fun fact about that March 2018. So we're talking back during the consecutive U show period um Kaku, you clinched it on day 14 uh but obviously you still have to wrestle all 15 days right so then he has day 15 against takiyasu who they have a photo finish and they make him do a rematch even though he's already got the U show it's the last <laughs> match of the entire tournament i had totally forgotten this uh and then in the in the in the rematch takiyasu gets him oh. like, what? what the hell man just <laughs> give me a break is takiyasu ozeki at that point I believe it would so. be if that was the final yeah. match for yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If it was the final match for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the the second of those two consecutive ones, that was fully, fully legit. No weird stuff going on. It was just a straight up fourteen and one. He beat Hakuho on the final day. Um, so yeah, good stuff. No no asterisks. No storylines. No nothing. All that special about that one. That was just super clean. Uh, weirdly, his his loss. Um. Let me pull it up because I Tomo Kaze, oh, right? I almost no, don't believe no, it. that was a different Basho. Uh, Shohozan was his only loss. Yeah, exactly. I I was did, like, <laughs> did did Shohozan finish with an eight and seven record? Yeah. Did he get an outstanding performance prize? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> the encyclopedia that is Bri- Ryan's brain. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I I remember that because I had. In our old prediction series that we did, we like chose people to get special prizes. And I remember I chose Show Hozan for that. And like he was seven and seven on the last day, and I just needed him to get a win on the last day, I think, to get to eight and seven. Cause I knew that he'd beat Kakryu and I knew Kakryu was gonna get the U show. And so if like you're a guy that was the only person to beat a U show winner, you got outstanding performance. And then he got the eight and seven on the final day. And that got me the point that I needed to either win or not lose. So I distinctly mm. remember that show <laughs> was on special in prize for some reason. <laughs> hmm. I don't all of those details correct, Jake? Everyone of them. Angry. (laughs) (laughs) Not angry. I just don't believe you that you don't have it open anymore. I told you to close the tabs before we started recording, but I don't have it open. You told me to close the cockney related tabs, not the sumo DB. Not not the show hose on related tabs that you always have. I was about to say. I always have the show hose on tab open just so I can tell that story whenever an opportunity comes up. He he has a scrapbook that he's been making just for show hose on. (laughs) Oh man, it's only his biceps. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that's and it's, all you need <laughs> yeah it takes up a full book um but so the the ankle was his uh his main injury problem in 2018 uh so he didn't really do all that great after his two you show uh he went three and two and then pulled out and then in september he actually went 10 and 0 and then lost his final five <laughs> so like oh as soon yeah as he... i think that started a trend that we we kind of picked up on yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and then he didn't even enter in November of 2018. So yeah, things are, things are tough here. Uh, January is the same way. Uh, and then we get like the last real successful period of his career is mid 2019, uh, where he completes three tournaments in a row Woo! for the first time in a year, more than a year. Um, he gets a 10 and five unremarkable. He loses a bunch of them at the end. Like our, like we had started predicting. Uh, then he gets an 11 and four, his seventh junior show. Hey, way to go. Pretty good. Pretty good job there. And then, uh, he manages to shake off the GSB jitters of having podcasters in Japan at the same time <laughs> as wrestling. That's right. And in July of 2019, he went 14 and one, including a win over Hakuho to get his sixth and final U show. I remember that one distinctly because he lost to Tomo Kaze. Yep. And I yep. thought Tomo Kaze. Well, who's this guy? <laughs> Man, if this guy's knees stay attached to his thighs, he was going to be great. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it like the very next tournament or something? Or it was key later? issue of 2019. Mm. Okay, because it was Tomokaze and Wakataka Kage, like on the same day or back to back or something. It was pretty close. It was like days three. Or it was very or very early. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I think no Wakataka Kage. It was got injured on day four because he had he four started wins. Four and, oh. four and oh, he never lost in the ring in Makauchi for like another year after that because he <laughs> <Yeah>. got hurt. <laughs> Our undefeated god god king of Makauchi. Little did we know that he was, was... actually kind of good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Kakuyu, though, uh, he won that U show while we were there. And uh, yeah, he, 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 he kind of shot his wad well, we, to impress us because he didn't finish a tournament for three more in a row. Uh, he went four and three, pulled out, uh, actually had a Fusen on day one in Kyushu of 2019. I think he, was he just got Asin- injured, but like too late to pull oh, yeah. out. Like, that was an uh... Asanoyama freebie win. Yeah. Yeah, they like if they have the if they have the Tori Kumi written out, which usually happens what like the Friday or something Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Or Friday yeah. Thursday, but like if they have it, the match is written out and somebody pulls out after that, it's a Fusen loss mm-hmm. um, because they're not going to like rewrite the whole thing. Yeah, typically you know if you're going to be out prior to day one, so it's really weird to see a day one Fusen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, what's funny is Kakuyu has two of them. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, one of his uh, earlier ones in 2015 was also a day one Fusen. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there was that, and then uh, 2020 begins, which was just a great year for everybody. Um, he went one in three and pulled out in January. And uh, he actually got his uh, his final tournament completed was also his eighth June U show in uh, March of 2020. He went 12 and three. Uh, yeah. and they, that was... they knew it was going to be a Yokozuna's last uh, complete Basho, so they're just like, let's celebrate all through May. We'll cancel the May tournament, just let the good times roll, uh, and then we'll come <laughs> back in July. Yep. The other thing that's worth noting on that one, um, that May or excuse me, March of 2020, uh, was Kakuyu was ranked the Yokozuna Ozeki. Yeah. Because for the first time in 38 years, they had like an unbalanced Bonsuke. They you need to have two Ozeki at the top, um, and because Takakesha was the only actual Ozeki, for purposes of I guess <laughs> nothing. Like what actually <laughs> change? Like the matchups don't change. The Bonsuke looks the same. Like physically, I don't know. You, but you gotta have two. But uh, I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't know yeah, what you're you You have to have two. So they just like put a little. Oh, next to uh, Kakuyu's ranking on that one, I guess. <laughs> and his name was double wide. Oh, is that was that what was physically different yeah. on the Bonsuke? And mm-hmm. cool because your name uh, beneath your name they have your rank, and so beneath Kakuyu's name they had the Yokozuna and the Ozeki rank on the Bonsuke. Yeah, I, ha- I actually uh, got that Bonsuke and it's hanging up in a wall in my house somewhere. Cool. Nice, nice. Um, but unfortunately, that like I said was the last tournament he completed, even with um. Even with the canceled May Basho, the one where we did our not so Basho, uh, our full simulated thing, couldn't um, even make it through that. Did he get injured in that one? <laughs> yeah, he pulled I, out. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. Um, he he comes back after cacking about for four months of recovery time, and in July, he has his final single match, and everybody remembers this one. This is the one where he Charlie Brown's uh, he misses oh. Endo's leg with a kick, and just falls on his ass, hurts his own elbow, and has to pull out. <laughs> And also his back. Mm -hmm. So now we get to round two, Electric Boogaloo, the Wrath of Khan uh, of, (laughs) hey, get healthy or retire. And he's like, no, (laughs) Uh, to both. (laughs) No, I I don't think this is round two of that. I think at least in our podcast terms, it's at least the third or fourth time. I would say fourth at this. Well, I think there were I think it was the second time that there were official things okay. because like 2017 when he missed he he went four in a row without completing yeah. he let's see yeah his next we, longest streak is three without completing we were a lot quicker to pull the trigger on getting him out of sumo yes <laughs> hey ydc west we are uh we're an influential body yeah indeed <laughs> it's true um but uh part of the reason that he might have been delaying the the decision to retire was it was a long ass procedure two and a half years to actually get his citizenship from the time that he started the procedure um he got his citizenship at the end of 2020 um 
and that would allow him to stay on the uh, stay on as an elder in the Sumo Association. As a Yokozuna, he's entitled to maintain the name Kakuryu for five years, uh, after which he has to get a stock. But if he didn't become a citizen, he couldn't do any of that. He would have to just be retired and out of the sport. So, would he be inheriting the Izutsu Kabu at that not point? Not automatically. Not automatically. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Um, so we kind of, we, we kind of, so yeah, Oshima um, has the Izutsu Kabu right officially, now. Officially, that is correct. And I do have a little bit more note on that okay. uh, okay. in a minute here. Um, because yeah, I did want to bring up that, um, during one of the tournaments that he pulled out of, uh, midway through the Basho, Izutsu Oyakata passed away. Um, Kakuyu had actually already pulled out the day that it happened. Um, so it could have been the case that those, that they're unrelated, but regardless, it wasn't a good tournament for him for many reasons. Um, but over the next couple months, what the, uh, the, uh, sumo association did was they, they sent the, like Ryan said, there were only three wrestlers. So they merged them with Michinoku stable. Um, Michinoku, uh, Oyakata was actually a former stable mate of Izutsu when they were both wrestling. So that's probably part of the reason for it. Um, but, uh, either way, uh, Michinoku stable, uh, the only other, uh, top division wrestler in that stable is Kiribayama. So for a couple of years, <clears throat> similar to Tochi Notion and Aoyama, just because of stable merging, um, there were more than two, or there were more than one foreigner in the stable. And that's the only way that that can really happen these days. Uh, generally, you are limited to one foreigner in your stable. Um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, when uh, Kakuyu committed to wrestling or retiring in uh, March of 2021, he obviously came up short, so he retired. And it was kind of strange because he retired. Like, didn't he make that announcement like halfway through the Basho? Do you remember that, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It was kind of, kind of like why he, he, he was talking that he would come back in May uh, and then that would be his do or die because he, he, he was good to go for the Haru Basho uh, just this year. And then something came up like three or four days before where he re-injured himself and then it sounded like all right sit out this one come back for may that'll be my make or break and then something don't know what changed his mind where he's like all right it's day eight nine something like that i'm gonna retire yeah so uh and it probably would have saved him some drama in the uh, off season between those two basho of getting yelled at by ydc east YDC West, you know, we, we, we had already sent our letters. We were, very we, we understand. We, we acknowledge, we understand. Thank you. We saw how Kisano Sato was treated with his like two years of just never doing anything. And we were like, you know what? Maybe Kakuyu, you're okay for now. Yeah. Either way though. <laughs> uh, so he was, he was officially done uh, mid Basho. Uh, and uh, he said he was relieved and freed by the decision, which I can totally get that. So it must've been like as much pressure as anybody could live under in a professional setting like that. But uh, anyways, uh, he, over the last couple of years of his career, he actually did have three kids. He had a uh, two daughters and a son uh, in the year in, let's see, 2015, 2017, and 2020. Sorry, one kid in each of those years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just don't want to get that too misconstrued. Oh, Even thanks. harder, it's a triplet machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even harder. Yes, her name is even harder. <laughs> God damn it. Um, so that's that's canon now. Kakadu's wife's name is even even harder. harder. It is even harder. <laughs> so the Izutsu Elder Stock I wanted to talk about real quick because it's a weird one. Um, so yes, officially it looks like Toyonoshima is the guy that is is holding on to it. But what's kind of weird. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to throw these sources under the bus because I have no legitimate source beyond them, but I've read about it on Sumo Forum and the Tachi I podcast guys. Uh, Tachi I podcast, by the way, uh, shout out to them. One of the top 25 English language Sumo podcasts. So good Ooh. for them. Yeah. <laughs> cracking, uh, cracking the top tier here. <laughs> um, but according to both of those sources, you, the, uh, yeah, you, you know, as, as like a little brother, you know. <laughs> Or like a cousin that you see sometimes and you kind of like tussle their hair and then like try to get out of the conversation quickly. Yeah. In in the photo of us with Kisei Nosato, 
we are clearly still us and their Kisei no Sato because we're still clearly the bigger deal. What? Okay. I think you might have said that backwards. That's, no, that's okay. I'm saying that we're a bigger deal than Kisei no Sato. I feel like we were talking about something. Okay. Now, now no. you got me back, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to both of those sources, uh, Izutsu Oyakata, or former Sakahoko, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to call him Sakahoko because this gets kind of confusing with all the people named Izutsu. Sakahoko, uh, his widow, still is exerting some sort of ownership control over the Kabu. Um, hmm. The Kabu, like the, the elder stock, the title of Izutsu, uh, with potentially the goal of keeping it in the family and potentially even offering it to any eligible rickshi who marries her daughter. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Which brings me to the entire reason for this podcast. I've never in my life wanted a reality show about sumo more <laughs> than the <laughs> sumo bachelorette here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So either... I don't know. Either there's some sort of like weird, creepy arranged marriage thing here, or somebody completely random is going to get that stock, or I don't know. I, I I absolutely can see some like K drama type potential here, some soap opera st- type stuff going on with Cocker. You oh, yeah. like, I'll marry totally. that girl. So hell, there are only 105 <laughs> Kabu. You know, that's uh, that's, that's all the something... Rikshi just appear on their bikes or just walk up to her on this. You know, the the entrance oh, to. Do. Yeah, exactly. Like, hi, hello. <laughs> uh, this is my name, and uh, yeah, and uh, I think you're really awesome. I would Give like to Kabu. execute my brand of romance. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Buden is going to be available in the very near future. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> not that that's oh. ever really stopped him before. What about Party Boy Abby? <laughs> Never know. <laughs> is True Maru like taken? Like, you know, does he have a Kabu <laughs> kind of lined up already? Ooh, he better. Yeah. I hope so. And I, this sounds like some solid, like a Bima TV, like after the boss show, it's into, <laughs> yeah, that, them trying to, to to swoon. So hopefully it's a reality Daughter. show, but at this point, all we know is that Kakuryu is trying to stay in the sumo association as a coach. Most likely, uh, if he does get that Izutsu uh, status, if he does, uh, if, if he does win over that daughter. Um, he, he would <laughs> probably start a new Izutsu stable. Uh, the, the name itself has been around for ages, um, but um, because there is currently no Izutsu stable, if he were to obtain that, he would have to start a new stable, like a new iteration of Izutsu stable. Um, so he would Izutsu probably... Izutsu West. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what we start. If one of us marries this girl, we will become yes. Izutsu West. <laughs> <laughs> he's got five. He's got five years. He's going to take all five years with his cock to you uh, name that he's able to use. Enjoy his time with even harder, and then <laughs> going to have to break the news to her so he can go with Izutsu's daughter. God damn it! Yeah, do what you got to do. <laughs> well, um, so that's that's all we know at this point. We're we're recording this in June of 2021, so it's not like much time has passed to really find out what's going on with cock you. By this point, he's probably got two or three more injuries, but we don't necessarily know what he's going to be doing professionally. So he's, in the he's meantime, be a coach for the JSA. That's what he's going to be doing professionally and teaching the finer abilities of basketball, <laughs> AKA the cock ring. <laughs> the cock ring. <laughs> yeah. You've guys seen the video where he like sinks a three pointer. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Do you remember his, the context? His daddy taught him that. I no, not at all. Other than Yokozuna and basketball players. Okie dokie, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, his his signature move. He's actually uh, he he can shoot the ball pretty well, but he's really good at defending. They actually call him the cack block. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All That's right. That's a good one. Mm. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> Jeez. now that we are done with the cack puns for the moment uh, and uh, we are wrapping up the story, why don't we do a little bit of trivia mm. and the gimmick for our trivia is because Kakuyu was never like the top guy, we are going to award points to whoever gets the second closest answer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's a little derivative, but all right. (laughs) So for the, for example, the first question you guys, uh, and and by the way, all, all tabs close sumo DB, Wikipedia, everything, close it out. 
Scrapbooks closed. Scrapbook show hose on. That's all the show hose on. That's it. Inapplicable. <laughs> there may be. There may you be can't some. Make me close that. <laughs> hey, I I can't I can't know for sure that there's no background cack in those. So you better close <laughs> that sucker up. Fine. All right. So for we'll we'll start off the the first question. We'll we'll kind of walk through the gimmick here. When is Cocker U's birthday? What day of the year? Um, so like whoever, whoever gets really close, if you actually get right on day of the year, lose. day of the month, uh, or day of the week. So like, uh, December 26th. Okay. For so like a full day. Yes. Okay. That is not acceptable, Mac. But you said what day of the year. The yes. What month and day. day. That's it. Oh, well, you didn't say that. Yes, did I did. Mac now just go write, find it. He like wrote freaking 200... Wednesday. No, he no. wrote like a three digit number. Th yes, what day. day of the year? The two hundred and sixty seventh day. Show Hoson's <laughs> bicep. <laughs> okay, now hold up your answers to the screen. I will read them off for those of you who are listening rather than watching this on uh, on YouTube. Um, you guys didn't have to write the year, but so far we've got two for two on the right answer there. Okay, so our three answers are Ryan. Ha- what? No, continue holding them there so I can read them off. No. <laughs> uh, Ryan is guessing August twenty first. That is the first closest. You lose. Damn it. <laughs> uh, Flaric good. wrote May eighteenth. That is the third closest. You lose. Mac wrote <laughs> ah. October seventeenth. That is the second closest. So Mac is, Mac gets the point because yeah. his real birthday is August ten. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ryan, you are the best at trivia. You lose. <laughs> I'm just so happy with this idea. <laughs> I was going to say, this is like Ryan's kryptonite. I love it. I like yeah. <laughs> All right. So how many people live in Sukhpatar province, the rural province where Kakuryu grew up? Uh, this is, uh, uh, like I said, most of the people in Mongolia are in Ulaanbaatar, like the like federal district type thing. But, uh, but the rest of the country is divided up into provinces. Not a whole lot of major cities and stuff like that. It's basically one city and a whole bunch of land. Um, but uh, let's see. So we have an answer from Mac of 17,000, an answer from Ryan of 1,067, and Flerick says dozens. <laughs> dozens? <laughs> so actually, the answer has to count as 24. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it, dozens is 24. Uh, 24 is too low. Actually, all three mm. of these are, are too low. Uh, but Ryan, you are the second to lowest. <laughs> <laughs> So there are 60,000 people in his province. Like, it, ah. And it's not like a small province physically. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so the, the answer of 1,000 is the winner here. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know how densely populated Mongolia is. And you neither know do I. Of their provinces. <laughs> well, Ryan, you know the second best. Therefore, you get a point. <laughs> so Sukhpatar, the province that he's from, translates to something very cool. What does it translate to? <laughs> oh, this is very subjective. This oh. is very subjective. What the second coolest or the second closest answer is going to be? So it's a it's a Mongolian word. There's it it contains two words. Um, so whatever you think is the second coolest thing to be guessed, <laughs> second second closest thing to this cool thing, write it down and let's let's see what you got. I have no idea. All right, so <laughs> Mac Mac writes second in command, which I mean thematically that's that's cool, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flerick wrote very cool. <laughs> Ryan says war eagle, which is by far the closest, so you get no points. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna give second in command the second yes. closest to the correct answer, so Mac gets another point. Uh, Sukhpatar translates to axe hero. Oh, that's Ooh. badass. Which is super cool. Just like uh, War Eagle is. <laughs> <laughs> I just stole like Aub- Auburn's college. Uh, that's what like they yell or something. They're like Auburn Tigers, but for some reason they have like a eagle or something at their games. And it's college Eagles football. Seem- it's-, it's college. Yeah. It's I almost wrote Roll Tide. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Roll Tide. Um, okay. Question number four. How many absences does the CAC have in his career? Matches or Bashos? How many matches? So his career record is X hundred and something, X hundred and something, and then this third number of matches where he was not Fusen, but was like just straight up not entered in the tournament. I'm not putting my answer up yet. <laughs> 
Ryan's very protective cheating, of this cheaters. potentially second closest answer. <laughs> well, I, I've got to write a number, then next person's going to write one higher, and then the next person's going to write one higher than that. <laughs> yeah, it's price, price is right rules, right? Uh, There's, fine. I have absolutely no idea what the proper game theory strategy is here. So <laughs> well, <he has> not. <laughs> Okay, so Damn we it. have... So actually, Flarick wins this one. Oh, nice. Uh, Ryan, you are the closest. <laughs> Ryan had 134, which is the most close to 231. Oh, wow. <laughs> which is so many, right? Oh, my yeah. God. Flarick wrote 71. Mac wrote 69 for the memes, uh, but it did not work out this time. Flarick, you get the points for being second closest to the correct answer, 231 yes. absences. So yeah, now, take bell? It. I don't know. I thought did I heard you? something yeah. like ring a bell. No, there's no I... bell. Might be having a stroke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one Do of the common burnt symptoms. toast. <laughs> uh, oh, no, my toast. <laughs> um, so similar to how many absences, how many Fusen losses did he have in his career? So this is like, how many times did he start a tournament? Or like we mentioned, not start a tournament, but didn't mention it early enough. How many Fusen losses are on his career? Mac, you're too high. Down. Mac, down. Move the thing down. Ah. There you go. All right. Just waiting on Flaric here. Get this is some very exact thinking to go for this. Shit. I knew it was going to happen somehow. The correct answer. Okay, so first off, we have Flaric with 14, Ryan with 10, and Mac with 7. So... The correct answer is 12. He has 12 <laughs> Fusen losses on his. So here we're going to do a tiebreaker. We're going to do a tiebreaker. Only Ryan and Flarick, whoever has the worst answer, whoever has the second best answer. <laughs> <is the> tie. <laughs> but no, no, no. We're, we're not. Re what we're guessing is what number on his list. So like, is it the first most thing that he has lost by uh, as far as techniques? Mm. Is it the second on his list of most common losing techniques? Third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. So we give like one first, second, Yeah, third. so write down a number okay. of what slot, what place do you think this this is on his uh oh, on the his Fusen. List. The Fusen, yep. Okay. So those 12 Fusen losses, where does that rank as far as like his top 10, top 20, or whatever uh, losing techniques? I'm going to resist from putting down 9,000. <laughs> it's over 9,000! <laughs> Hey! <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you got, Flair? I don't think there's that many uh, Kimarite, so I'm going to call bullshit on Ryan. So, but Ryan's okay. answer is the second best here. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So well played, Ryan. Well so, played. <laughs> Flarek, you wrote 40. Ryan wrote 2047, which is worse. So, if the correct answer was it is his seventh most common losing Kimarite, which is wow. just hilarious, right? Wow. Clark and I working with the same game theory. I just actually went with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm I, I am I'm happy for you. I'm not yeah, sad. This is, this is the worst. I <laughs> well love played. it. This this really needs three people in order to be like properly frustrating for you and entertaining for me. Yeah, because I still need to be somewhat accurate, but I don't know how accurate is too <laughs> yeah. accurate. And also, I don't know the answer to any of these. Bingo. Also, All right. I got I got uh, two more questions. Although the last one is multi part. All right. Um. So what rank? Did uh, Kakuyu win his only lower division U show? Know the answer. <laughs> so uh, in his in his uh, we mentioned it was a fairly slow rise to the top division. Slow in part because he did only get one one time did he go uh, did did he actually win his division? All the other times he was just getting like you know barely Kachikoshis or whatever. Mac, I need you to be more specific. Oh, oh, come on. Like actual Not number. division, but actual like number. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't want to make it don't want to make it too easy or hard or confusing or whatever your brain is tying itself in right now as you try to get the second best answer. All right, everybody ready? Yep. Eh. Correct answer is Sandanme 16. Oh, oh, bullseye! But wait. Oh, oh wait. Crap. I'm sorry. It's Sandan May 17. I was reading your answer of 17 of 16 because it was too close. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so Sandan May 17. Mac, you got almost dead on. You lose. Ah! Ryan, you got second closest at Sandan May one. 
therefore you get a point. And uh, Flaric wrote down Jurio 16, which is way too far off. Way too high. <laughs> Curses. Third place. Okay, so I the last the, question. I got close to the right answer, but no points. <laughs> the last question is multi-part. Um, so I want to know what was his record against the other Yokozunas? So um, I, I just want a winning percentage from you guys. So mm. there are four Yokozuna that he faced in his career um, in order, I guess, uh, from earliest in his career to latest. And, and this is career. So not just like against Kisuno Sato as a Yokozuna. I don't think they actually ever faced as Yokozuna, did they? Probably not. Um, so against Asashoryu, against Hakuho, against Haramufuji, and against Kisuno Sato. I want four numbers from you, and I want them to be percentages. And I'll read off the numbers, because uh, some of these are kind of funny. Oh, you want a percentage against each? Yokozuna? I want a percentage against each of the four. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So this one okay. is going to be four points, uh, and and I'll split up the points. Um, so but... I'll show you Hakuho, uh, Haruma Fuji, and then... Kisuno Ka- Sato. Kisuno Sato? Yep. Like, so, so it's including the entire time. Okay. Yeah. So like I don't think he ever faced Kisuno Sato as a as, when they were both Yokozuna, but they did face off fifty times in their career. So what was the winning percentage, for example? So I want all four of them, and we'll start with Asashoryu. And I got the numbers in front of me here. So oh, okay, I have to fold this. <laughs> yes, whatever origami you have to do to reveal your answers in the proper order is totally fine. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys a little extra time to think. You can write down all four right now if you want, however you want to do it. You but let me know. With Asa? Yep. Let me know okay. when you guys are ready with Asa Shoryu. you. Okay. I'm ready. I'm good. Same. All right. So hold up your answers. The correct answer is zero. So Dang. he never beat he never beat Asa Shoryu. Ouch. So, Flerick, you are the closest. You lose. Uh, Ryan, uh, <laughs> Flerick wrote down zero. Ryan wrote down 10. And Mac wrote down 23. So, Ryan, you get a point for being the second closest on that one. Okay, next. What is his winning percentage against Hakuho? Oh, by the way, it was zero for six uh, against Asashoryu in his career. So, Hakuho. uh, Ryan has 2%. Uh, Mac lowered a little. Mac, you have 8%. And Flarek has five percent. So yes, Ryan, you know that you are you are eliminated in this one. Uh, it's actually fifteen. Uh, mm. So Flarek, Flarek is the second closest to uh, yeah, the Flarek. eight and forty-four against Haku. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, since we're going in Yokozuna order, Harama Fuji is next. Uh, hold up your answers when you are ready with Harama Fuji. Um, so Mac has seventeen. Ryan has twenty. Flarek has 40. The correct answer is 38.6. So, Flarek, you were closest. Ryan, you were second closest. That is a point for Ryan. And then lastly, career. Uh, like I said, um, oh, uh, God, I keep forgetting to do this. 17 and 27 against Haruma Fuji. Hmm. 38.6%. Uh, Kisuno Sato. This one is going to be an even, like, uh, like dead on a number because they matched up exactly 50 times. How cool is that? All right. Uh, Max's answer is 15. Ryan's is 50. Flarex is 71. The correct answer is 36. Ooh. 36%. Also terrible against him too. Ma- <laughs> Ryan, did you already do the math in your head? Who's, who got? I was at 14% off, and what was Max's number? I was 15. You were so, 15% total. 15% total. So Mac is Mac is further off than you. Yeah. Okay. So Mac gets a point for the Yay. last one. So, uh, yeah, uh, he went 18 and 32 against Kisuno Sato. So just terrible against all four of them, which I thought was worth bringing up. Um, I, I just, that, that was kind of baffling to me. Like, I, I was just looking up his, his numbers against other people that he'd faced off uh, against uh, a large number of times. And most of them are pretty respectable. Like, you know, Koto Shogaku is another guy you toss in that mix. He went 30 and 22 against him. He went 29 and 14 against Goedo. Um, uh, a- anybody else you guys would be curious about? That's about it, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tochi Ozan, surprisingly, is also way up on that list. He's 24 and oh, yeah, 21 against Tochi Ozan. 
Yeah, Toji yeah. Ozon was definitely declining by the time we started commentating. Yeah. It, it kind of like lines up to what we know. Like he consistently beats the people below him, but there's a couple people above him who kind of seem to consistently have his number. What about Terra no Fuji? Terra no Fuji. There you go. Uh, seven and four. Or excuse me, eight and four if you count the playoff. Hmm. Okay. So perfectly respectable there. Um, but yeah, um, Shodai, he went 13 and 0 against Shodai. Wow. I think that might be the highest undefeated. Oh, nope, never mind. Kaisei, 15 and 0. Oh, geez. Kaisei <laughs> is very famous for having never beaten a Yokozuna. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he almost has it over Aoyama. He went 20 and 1 against Aoyama in his career. <laughs> <laughs> um, 23 and 4 against Tochi Notion, like we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, but yeah, so uh, that is our Kakaryu episode. Uh, I'm going to total up our trivia here. Uh, Mac, you got three answers right. Flaric, you got two answers right. Ryan, you got five answers right, which is the most. So therefore, Mac in second place. <laughs> My strategy worked, baby! <laughs> and Ryan wrote down bullshit because he knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> My strategy worked. Mac, therefore, you know the second most, second most about Kakaryu. <laughs> I am a Kakaryu aficionado. <laughs> kind of a little. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll take us out. If you guys have any memories of Kisuno Sato. Oh, Whoa. Be before. Whoa. Uh, if before you have we... any memories of Kakaryu, I was just going to say, um, when we, uh, when we yeah, tweet out this You're really episode, bad pronouncing his name, Jake. <laughs> it's even harder. Or wait, yes. that's who he married. That's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, anyways, uh, <laughs> leave us leave us your memories of Kakuyu, not Kisuno Sato, or if you have <laughs> memories of both of them at the same time, I suppose we'll accept those. Uh, Ryan, what did you have? I was gonna say before we we log off of this episode, this is probably the first guy that like we've seen a decent amount of his career that's retiring and we might be able to share our own thoughts on Kakaryu a little bit uh, here since like we actually saw four of his U shows and got to see a decent amount of his uh, career, not decent amount of his career, but decent amount of his Yokozuna career. Uh, yeah. So just, yeah. If do you anybody guys have any, had other, uh... any particular memories of Kakaryu? I know Flarek was always a big fan boy of the CAC. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we, we don't have to rush out of here. We got some time. Um, Flaric. So yeah, the 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 lunchbox, the lunchbox ordeal that I know is still cluttering up your garage and and yep. uh, causing trouble if, for uh, your yeah, bank if account. Yeah, anyone wants to buy one, two, or twenty lunchboxes. I don't know. <laughs> I I always kind of liked the guy, mostly because I feel like everyone kind of discounted him. Like he's not that good, and like every time he seems to come back. Granted, yeah, he's plagued with injury times, but when he's healthy, he like consistently got Yokozuna, uh, Kachikoshi, and like there's a while he was winning. Like he won two U shows in a row when he was going against uh, uh, Tochi no Shin during that whole entire time. So I, I kind of liked him because of that, because he's a little bit of an underdog, but I know I knew he was pretty good. And he showed that consistently when he is healthy. And I, the other thing I just, I, I like, I like this, his style was like mystifying. It wasn't flashy. It was just kind of like, it was like consistently sneakily good. Like where he's just kind of just, he, uh, I always thought it was kind of more defensive where he's kind of reactionary. He pulled uh, a lot more than I think a lot, a lot of people want a Yokozuna to. I don't think we care about that, but I think mm -hmm. uh, people, probably the same people that don't like Takakesho style or something like that, they'd probably be angry that somebody that pulls as much as he does was a Yokozuna. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, his, uh, just for reference here, uh, Yori Kiri was his most common winning Kimarite by a decent amount. You'd expect Oshidashi to be a second place, even if you're looking at somebody who's primarily a grappler. But he actually has more Hataki Komi wins than Oshidashi wins. Definitely um, a pull, then. Yeah, 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 exactly. So he would he would allow people to overextend uh, as as a strategy. It wasn't like he was giving up and therefore pulling, you know, as a last resort. It was like actually his strategy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that's actually I've grown to appreciate a lot more, especially in the. The, the time of Takakesha, who I think is really, really good at that pushing and pulling like balance, because it can really easily go bad, but if you're like really on top of it, you can like just be really world class. And I think like that's what you should like. He is a Yokozuna. He is top of the entire field, and like he was able to use those techniques very well. And other than that, like he's just like seems like a nice guy. I like he definitely he didn't have any 
no real scandals uh, that I know of. And like he was like head of the players association too, I believe for Richie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I just he seems like a good guy, and I when he was healthy, I enjoyed watching him do his brand of sumo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's somebody that I think I wish I appreciated more when I was watching him, because uh, I think, I mean, kind of had to make our assumptions based on Kakryu in the middle of his Yokozuna run. And I think when we first started, it was like we talked about, he was always injured. And so I don't, I don't think I ever probably gave him the credit that he deserved. Even now I'm looking up the two you show that he won back to back. And I was just like, well, you know, in that first one, he only fought two Ozeki, one Sekiwake and one Komosubi. And he went two and two against them. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm still trying to discredit the guy. I was yeah. about to say, come on, Ryan. You well, don't even realize you're doing it, and you're yeah. like still trying to minimize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's kind of weird. Like I hear all these good stories about Kakuryu and just how amazing of a person it seems like he was, and it's just like I really wish that I gave him more of a chance when he was fighting to appreciate him. Because I think I just came down on the side of, well, he's always injured. Uh, he probably should retire and then he kept going. And so I kind of just like was cheering against him a little a bit sour in taste. my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I kind of wish I didn't have that point of view as I was watching him kind of <laughs> appreciated him a little bit more, but I mean, that's where I was at. Uh, so that that's kind of my overall memory of Kakuryu is just constantly waiting for him to retire. But now that we kind of have a gap in the Yokozuna, I mean, this guy easily could have, eight, nine, ten U shows right now with Hakuho gone if he had been able to stay healthy because he he was after Haramafuji left, he was the next best guy. He was the clear next best guy. But with Kakuryu and Hakuho gone, there was no clear next best guy that Kakuryu would have been uh with Hakuho's absence. Yeah. And, and uh in the Hakuho era, in, unless you count Asashoryu, he is he's by a wide margin the third best guy. Um, Haramafuji had what nine, I think in his nine wins in his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kakuryu has six. And then next closest place, you got Takakesho, Mitakiyumi, and Kisuno Sato with two. And I think you got to get, or like, excuse me, Terano Fuji also has, yeah, has Terano four. Fuji. Yeah. But I was, I, but I was thinking like, Kisei no Sato's career. Yeah. The you show numbers aren't there, but the extreme consistency that he had to get 12 June you show before that first yeah. you show. Yeah. Like if you just look at his numbers from Basho to Basho are probably a lot more impressive than what his you show count is. Um, but yeah, I, I would still agree. Kak- probably take healthy cock to you when you can, but I was looking through his stats earlier today uh, to try to game the system and uh, win points and trivia. <laughs> uh, he only had one, full year as a Yokozuna where he completed, well, it wasn't even like a calendar year, but where he completed six Basho in a row as a Yokozuna. Oof. That and sucks. So he, he just, as soon as he hit that, that Yokozuna rank, his just body just gave out on him, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I did uh, total it up real quick. Uh, if you add Yusho and Jun Yusho together, Kakuryu and Kisuno Sato both have 14. Um, but like, one one of them translated that into three times as many actual wins and when you're yeah you can say you you can talk about injury you can talk about when hakuho's there and when he's not there but that means something the, he's probably you know, got a little yeah. bit more mental toughness he can execute yeah down well i mean we talked about him starting off 10 and 0 then losing the next five and <laughs> yeah yeah so but he he did have some of that to be able to beat Hakuho on the final day when the Basho was on the line multiple times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. There, there's there's definitely something to say for the uh, the toughness it takes to actually get those wins, and that's why that's why Yusho is the thing that's you know like engraved on your career, and Jun Yusho is like way down the list. You know. Yep. So. Yeah, I think my ultimate opinion of him is uh, he was never flashy. Uh, but but he got the job done. Uh, he was, he was mm. never going to be the greatest. He was never going to be the greatest of his time. Uh, but he, he was good enough to be on that Mount Rushmore of the Hakuho. He era. was genuine. He was just mm-hmm. a genuine 
even Kyo Yokozuna wasn't flashy, didn't go out and do anything extravagant. He was just there. He was the constant. <laughs> I did really like, though, that he th- there's a very limited selection of guys that will show just like that tiny little bit of emotion on the ring. I love his smile. <laughs> yeah. And, and like when I think I can't remember what match it was. I don't know. There was some match where something kind of funny happened and he lost. Uh, but like he gets up and he's smiling because it's like, that was so stupid. That was, that was ridiculous. What just happened, <laughs> but he's still just like enjoying himself. He's, he was never the guy that like, like Hakuho is furious every time he loses, regardless of how legitimate it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And Kaku is just kind of, he's just kind of, you know, it, top of the me. world, but doing, <laughs> but doing what he loves, you know? Yeah. He, he's the guy that made it to Yokozuna and he's like, can you guys believe I'm Yokozuna? How cool is that? <laughs> Whereas Hakuho is like, I need to be the greatest of all time. And like, he's never going to be happy. Whereas I think Kakuryu was very happy with where he ended up. Yeah. Like, uh, like Hakuho is Ricky Bobby yelling, like, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah. And then Kakuryu <laughs> is the dad going, what? I was probably drunk when I said that. You can be second. You can be third. Third. Hell, you can even be fifth. Yeah. <laughs> that is just what popped into my head when you said that. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, I, I think I'll appreciate him a lot more in hindsight than I did hmm. in real time. Uh, and so there's probably guys now like that I'm not appreciating, like yeah, Mitaki Yumi. That Mitaki like, Yumi. I was just gonna say. <laughs> yep. <laughs> People might try to throw Goedo in my face, and no, he, he got the exact. I knew that not he to from throw me. that one out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, with him gone, and like, let's let's flash forward to uh, probably after the next Basho, if Hakuho retires, we'll, with with those two guys gone, we have nobody that has more than four Yusho in their career with Terano Fuji as far as active Rikshi goes, mm-hmm. and after him, there's Mitakiyumi and Takakesho at two. Like we're he he's a he, he's absolutely a critical uh, important point an, an important part of that generation that is now retiring with you know Kisuno Sato Haruma Fuji gone um, like it's it, it's a big deal I think that you know we we've talked about on this podcast that we knew we were in a generational turnover point and Cocker is definitely a big one that yeah you you don't really know what you got until it's gone. Although he's been gone for like, you know, a year and a half, but yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm, I absolutely agree with you, Ryan, on that one. Yeah, it's like, a, if the goodbye is not hard, that means that the, 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 what was it? The, the relationship, the feelings yeah. you had from didn't matter. Or the emotions like weren't there. Yeah. Put that exact, exact, perfectly quoted quote on a pillow. I don't want any paraphrasing yeah. or cleaning up of that. I want what Flarek said on a pillow. There you go. <laughs> Uh, anybody have any other uh, stories or incidents we didn't talk about? I don't. I, I don't really think so. Mm. I, I guess for me, the only other thing I'd bring up is I definitely remember early on in watching Sumo, um, like towards the end of 2016, I think it would have been. I was kind of on the lookout for, like, eventually Ryan would find his Goedo, like you know the guy that was good enough to love to hate him, and I kind of tried to do that with Kakuyu, but then he just like stopped wrestling, you know, mm-hmm. so it like wasn't fun anymore. So he just, yeah. yeah, for me, he just kind of faded out, but like, I, I really wanted him to be my early nemesis. So yeah. it, it mm-hmm. just didn't work out. Yeah. And to, to Cockney's credit, there's only 20 people in the history of the world that have won more tournaments than him. Oh, holy cow. Nice. Uh-huh. And this Six. is the era of Hakaho, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who knows how many he'd be walking around with if Hakuho wasn't around. I mean, that's why you got to go to Mr. J Wag's channel for the Shadow of Indeed, Hakuho series. Indeed, the Shadow of Hakuho. <laughs> yeah, um, do you know how far along he is in that? Because I'd love if he has a final count of how many extra Kakuyu would have gotten. He did a quick one recently. I can't remember how far along it was exactly. I think we're past the halfway point, but I don't. it's not quite close to ending yet. Yeah, we'll have to touch base with him later. Yep, he's busy right now. Yes. Well, uh, if that is all, like I said, I, I, I do want to, uh, I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to, uh, start cutting you guys off earlier, but yeah, I definitely do want to hear stories. If anybody has, uh, other Kakuyu stuff they want to bring up. Um, so let's, let's get that conversation going on Twitter. See if anybody else has, uh, some more fun stories for us. Yep. 
And we also put out a Twitter thread a couple of days ago asking for questions. We are going to be doing another Ask GSB episode. Uh, we got quite a bit of a response on Twitter for that. But if you're not on Twitter and want to send us a question that you would like us to answer on an upcoming podcast, you can uh, send us a voicemail. Uh, Mac, what's the number for that voicemail? 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. That, you, uh, you got can, it right. <laughs> yeah. You can also uh, email us, grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, if you have any questions. So, uh, Anna, this is this is your chance. This is our call uh, for you to send us those yes. questions you've been building up. <laughs> <laughs> Are there potentially any social media platforms we can check out too, Ryan? Probably not. No, I, that's your job, Flarek. You know all the social media. You, you were doing all the other. Uh, yeah, you uh, did all of mine, jerk. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, go, if you want somebody it? to do it right, go to Twitter. We are mm. G Sumo Breakdown on Twitter. Uh, not okay. allowed. Not What's allowed. What's the, the full, full URL for that? Just out of curiosity. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I mean, I could. I'm not going to pull it up. Screw you. Why are um, you humoring him? No. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> YouTube. Grand Sumo Breakdown. We are on Facebook. Grand Sumo Breakdown. We have a blog. Uh, wordpress.grandsumobreakdown.com uh, Patreon We have we have a Patreon, you do have a Grand Patreon. .com. It's only one or three dollars or more or if more. you want uh, to uh, join our Patreon. One dollar you are thrown into the Bolo Coppolence where once per basho on our main preview, midway and recap episodes uh, on one of those three you will get a compliment from one of the GSB hosts and if you sign up for the $3 level, not only will you get a compliment, but you will force us to talk about whatever you want in a segment. Uh, Interesting way to phrase as, that. Yes. As long as it's not we are bound by blood. <laughs> we, we're, not, we're not doing anything super offensive. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, I'd love it can, if you wanted to push the boundaries, though. So send us your ideas. Yes. <laughs> See what we can get Ryan to commit to for a topic. <laughs> you can send us a bird with a note tied around its leg. Jake, what's your address so that they can send the bird? <laughs> Birds can't read addresses, Ryan. <laughs> Almost got me there. You can you can write a message in a bottle, throw it into the ocean. We live in Iowa. It might take a while for us to <laughs> for it to get there, but damn it, hey, we'll try our best. With this with the sea levels rising, give it like maybe <laughs> maybe 20 years tops. There you go. <laughs> I'm believe, excited to have oceanfront property in a decade. <laughs> I believe Mac has a telegram probably hidden in his basement. So if you if you want to send something there, how Flair's do you know about our that? resident Morris code master? Uh, so you can beep, beep. do that. Uh, I believe I got I got a CB radio in the back. My call sign is Big Daddy Sumo. Uh, so just just find oh Big Daddy God. Sumo. Oh God, I regret CB this. Radio. Jake, no, <laughs> Jake. All right, get me out. End it. Get me out. Wait, Mac. What's our fax number? Uh, no. <laughs> I think I'll end it there. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.